Hey guys, Magic here, and today I want to talk about self-respect. Um, this is a kind of a hard topic because there's self-love and self-respect and they kind of fall in the same ballpark, but you can, um, they're not exactly the same. Um, just like we know we can love someone, um, and usually when we love someone, we respect them, but we can respect someone without loving them. Um, so, the... There's certain things that have to be true for you to cultivate self-respect. The first thing that must be true is, is that you must respect yourself, obviously. Otherwise, it wouldn't be self-respect. But you also must know how to respect others as well. See, with self-respect, if you want others to respect you, I mean... Respect is a two-way street. We often hear that. And therefore, if we want respect from others, we must show respect, right? Uh, but it also works with ourselves. If we don't respect ourselves, how can we expect anyone else to respect us? Um, if we, no, it's kind of like we, we can't love anybody until we love ourselves. Or we can't expect someone to love us the way we want to be loved until we can do that. Um, so you need to cultivate self-respect for that purpose. But that is what needs to be true. Uh, but how can we do that? Um, so, obviously. Now, these other things that are steps towards gaining that self-respect and showing self-respect are also things that have to be true for you to have self-respect. But we're going to number them as steps towards self-respect. Okay? okay? So, number one, the first thing that will help you to cultivate the self-respect that you want is to stop tolerating people who do not support you. If they obviously do not have your back and they obviously do not care about you, don't tolerate them in your life. Cut them out. Now, so there's some people that we can't, like coworkers, um, but friends, yeah, we can be like, oh, you don't, you no longer are a good influence for me. You have become toxic to my life. I'm sorry, bye. Oh, we can do that with family too um, unless of course you have to live with your family for whatever reason and then that might be harder but once you move out you can drop that so you just gotta put that boundary up be like if you are not positive you are not lifting me up if you are not enriching my life if you're not making me feel like I like if you're bringing me down all the time why would I want to hang out with you that's just, just how it is you know so, number one, stop tolerating people who are not supporting you, who are bringing you down. Don't stay stuck on their level because you are meant to go higher. And the second thing to cultivate self-respect is to take care of your body. Um, now, it is a process. It is a journey to getting better and taking better care of yourself. And you need to respect that. Don't be so hard on yourself. Understand it's a process. Uh, but you do need to acknowledge where you're at and where you'd like to be. Like, obviously, right now, where I'm at is I'm drinking a Pepsi really, really late at night. Because I'm craving a soda for some reason. But I've taken steps to where it kind of balances. I feel, in my opinion, I've been drinking the amount of water I'm supposed to drink every day. And I'm trying to eat at least one healthy meal a day. And those are my little I exercise for 30 minutes a day. And those are my little steps towards a better health. Now, granted, I know eventually... I will need to cut out the soda and I'll need to cut out the processed foods altogether if I want to get in better health. But for right now, I'm taking baby steps in that direction and I understand that, you know, sometimes I'm going to fall off the wagon and sometimes I'm not going to drink all the water or I'm going to be too tired to exercise or just that life gets busy and I may not have time to or I'm out and about all day and I just don't have time to stop and make something healthy to eat so I eat more junk food than I should that day but um doesn't mean I get to beat myself up about it I just take a deep breath and remind myself that we can always start again tomorrow each every day is a chance to start again number three on how to cultivate self-respect is go for the best go for what is serving you don't keep things in your life that are not serving you this kind of goes along with those people in your life that are not enriching it or not making you feel good or bringing you down you want to do that with stuff in your life too and situations and even if it's your job if your job is bringing you down maybe it's time to find somewhere else to be number four thing to cultivate self-respect 
is to find a job or a career that enriches your life, that helps your mental state and your well-being and is that you're passionate about. Um, don't stay in a job that's like you feel like is draining you, that is like sucking your soul out of you, that you find overwhelming. You need to find a job or a career or a life path or whatever you want to call it that invigorates you, makes you excited, makes you feel like you could do this forever, no, even if it's hard. Um, for me, that is uh, victim advocacy. That's actually what I'm trying to do with my life. Um, I'm getting a degree and I'm going to try to pursue that. And I've done a lot of research on the topic and there's a lot of parts of it that I know are going to be hard, but I also know that I am so passionate about it that the hard things won't really matter because I'll be doing something that I feel matters, something that I care about. And that'll make it worth it. Because right now, um, I'm working a job that I just don't feel all that passionate about. I just don't. And I'm trying to do other things that I am more passionate about, like my craft shop or my writing, because I'm very passionate about that. Writing is the only time where I feel at one with the universe anymore. And, or making these videos. I feel passionate about that as well. So I'm trying to do things that I find more pa uh, more passionate about. And until those things take off, I'm looking for a career that will be something that I could do and be passionate about. And that would also pay my bills until what I would really like to be doing starts to pay off. Okay, so the fifth thing you can do to gain self-respect is to Pay attention to what's being said around you. Pay attention to the words that come out of your mouth and the thoughts in your head. The thoughts in your head become how you feel and if how you and how you feel becomes what your reality is. Because in the end, if we're looking for reasons to be happy, for instance, we will find reasons to be happy and grateful. If we're looking for reasons to be miserable and hate our lives, we'll find those reasons. So just be mindful of what's going through your head. And yeah, we all have those negative thoughts, but it's important to take a deep breath and correct it. Like, I'll have a thought like say, that says, hey, you're stupid. And I'll be like, immediately like, deep breath. And then I'll be like, no, we're not stupid. We just made a mistake. Mistakes are okay. They help us learn. Or like, you may, so, you, and you can really do that with any kind of thought. Um, as for words coming out of your mouth, like, it would be like if I actually had said out loud, I'm stupid, which I do sometimes whenever I have that thought. Um, and that's also just to take a verbal affirmation and remind yourself that that's not true and all that, um, that you're safe. Like sometimes I'll be feeling very unsafe. Like I'll take note of how I feel when I'm having these negative thoughts and then I'll be like, it's okay. We're safe. We're okay. And then I feel better. Um, but yeah, you just need to make sure that, you know, you're actually paying attention to these things. Because our thoughts have power over how we feel and how we feel has power over our world. But the words that come out of our mouth is what we speak into existence. So we need to make sure that we're very careful about that because words have so much power. Um, a, uh, another thing is, is that like, you need to find your voice and be real to yourself. Because if you're like not saying something because you're scared of what other people will think, or you're scared that they won't like your opinion or that they'll, uh, they'll argue with you. And yeah, they might argue with you. They might disagree with you. They might yell at you. But if you are purposely denying your truth for the benefit of other people or to make them happy, you are not respecting yourself. Because obviously if those people would yell at you or scream at you or very loudly voice their truth to you, then why shouldn't you? The, your truth is your truth and you need to be real to you and sometimes that means that you can't get along with everybody and pleasing everybody is impossible anyways and so many of us have so much self-doubt and self-hatred and regrets because we didn't say something when we felt we should have we didn't stick up for ourselves in that moment so if you want to cultivate self-respect it starts with standing up for yourself it starts with finding your voice speaking your truth being true to you, which is what I strive to do in this channel. So a sixth thing is to understand that not everybody deserves your words. And if 
they don't, it's fine to ghost them. Just pretend like they don't exist, because then they won't. It's that simple. Um, my dad always said I had the uncanny ability to, if I decided someone didn't exist in my world, boop, they were gone out of my brain, and I no longer care. Um, it's really that simple. All you gotta do is just stop talking to them, honestly. Uh, seventh thing is to remember that you don't always have to justify your actions. If something felt right to you, and you were doing it for you, you don't need to explain to anybody else. Like, say you said you were going to go to a party, and now you decide you didn't want to because you just can't handle it. You don't have to justify that to anybody else. You don't need to make up an excuse. You don't need to tell them why. All you gotta do is say, I am not going. And that's all that's needed. And if they can't understand that, then, you know, that's their problem. Not yours. Your true friends will understand that you're doing what's best for you. And that's all those are the people that you need in your life the people that get it not people that just want to control you the eighth thing is that people will try to control you everyone's going to pull you in different directions everyone's going to try to control you everyone has expectations of what you should and should not do it's important that you break these expectations and do what you want to do do what you feel is right for you and your life now that doesn't mean you purposely fail that means do what you feel is right. If meeting that expectation is what you want to do and what would make you feel like your best self, then by all means. But if it doesn't, then don't worry about it. If you hit it, you hit it. If you don't, oh well. Pursue what makes you feel like the best version of yourself because if you don't take control of your life, if you don't go for what you want to go for, someone else will control what you do. Someone else will control your life and then you'll get to the end of your life with the regrets and they won't care. So do what's best for you. Don't worry about their expectations, only worry about yours. Nine is obviously move towards your greatest version. As we move into our higher selves, obviously we will become more respectful of ourselves. And ten is self-care. It is so very important that we take care of ourselves and that we take time for ourselves and that we love on ourselves because that is how we fill our cup. Um, so many people are going to try to put things in your head and you just need to not let them in there. Control your own narrative, control your story because it is yours to write, not theirs. And if you need a break, take a break. Take a minute, take some time for yourself. Find ways to incorporate self-care into your everyday and you'll start to love and respect yourself more as you do so. That's just a fact. All right guys, that'll be it for this one. I do hope that you found this useful and enjoyable and if you did like it, feel free to share it with a friend. Um, until then, um, if you would like to check out my book, The Asylum Gates, it is on my website, www.magicscraftshop.com. Uh, and I do wish you the best of luck. And remember, God, spread the love, because love always wins. Bye.